bit of a partnership by babar azam uh, the evening before this test match and then of course moving on today we had performances from mohammad rizwan and then of course the tail uh, tried their best to support him but it's been a stellar performance absolutely phenomenal pakistan have deserved every bit of this victory like we said that if they want to win they'll have to play aggressive cricket positive cricket and break every record in the book and they managed to do that and that's how teams progress i think this is now the culture that we want consistently in the pakistan cricket team where they believe and you know uh, icc test championship if you're able to make it to that spot of playing the final at lords it's going to be absolutely spectacular so congratulations to pakistan cricket team the boys in green the pakistan cricket board and also to each and every one of you that is pakistan cricket's loyal fans that you've been there stayed put and you know we finally achieved the target that how we wanted it to then moving on some more cricket to discuss on sports extra pakistan's women's cricket team beating ireland in the tri series a match that was played yesterday they were, this match was reduced to of course uh, 13 overs aside due to rain but uh, pakistan women managing to beat ireland by 13 runs stellar performance as our bowlers stifled ireland nidha dar was absolutely amazing with a all round brilliance and we will of course be appreciating that and discussing how important is this victory now they'll be facing australia on the 23rd and after this tri series it is of course the commonwealth games as well that's what we've got for the show today we'll be discussing all of this in detail in studios first of all we've been joined by cricket commentator and expert kiasif ahmed assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam how are you sir i'm good thank you we've also been joined by the king himself hasan hussain qureshi assalam alaikum sir how are you assalam alaikum ahmed ji assalam alaikum asif bhai Pleasure One to be here. Was Sire, what would you like to add? Uh, spectacular victory for us. How excited are you, sir? It's it's just uh, unbelievable. You know, I think the number I'm reading the number of records we've broken in this chase, not just as a team but also individuals, and it really augurs well for the future. It's uh, we saw a lot of negativity on day one from some people. I, I hope they can you know bring some positivity in their lives now. Just something worth celebrating. Something brilliant. for pakistan cricket to celebrate a uh, long long may it continue it's a brilliant group of boys uh, and they have that team spirit and you know they never seem to give up uh, and that's the most that's the most amazing thing amaj that's all we can ask for absolutely k asif is also excited and so am i but we'll be discussing it and correcting all of the errors that have been there in the past few days let's take a look at this report look at it. 22-year-old Abdullah Shafiq hit an unbeaten 160 as Pakistan chased down a record target of 342 in Gale to beat Sri Lanka by four wickets in the opening test of the two-match series, taking a 1-0 lead in the final session of the fifth day play. Pakistan resumed the day on 222 for three. Mohammad Rizwan opened his day's account with Abdullah, and the two batters composed a score where they 71 runs off 146 balls together to ensure a smooth 342 runs chase. Rizwan scored 40 off 74 balls before falling to Jay Surya, who managed nine wickets in the match. That has to be. That was great for the way. Pakistan lost two quick wickets after Rizwan's exit, but Abdullah stood firm and played the anchor's role to perfection as he smashed seven boundaries and a six throughout. Also, he became the only fifth batter overall to play 400 plus deliveries in the fourth innings of a test. This will be it. This will be it. A record run chasing goal, an exceptional innings from an exceptional talent. Okay. For his brilliant knock, Abdullah bagged his maiden man of the match award in Test cricket. There you have it, player of the match, Abdullah Shafiq, stellar performance, 13 in the mm. first innings, and what a comeback, 160 not out. Kiasif Ahmed, your thoughts? Uh, first of all, congratulations to the entire nation. What a game that was for Pakistan, and of course that we were looking. Uh, eagerly a victory in test cricket and of course that when you're playing in Sri Lanka and uh, it's a test match fourth innings you're chasing and uh, you know we're not good we do not have good record in chasing and when you are chasing a record chase because 260 was the highest with the Gal Cricket Stadium but Pakistan did a phenomenal job and uh, uh, as uh, Hasan Bai said that uh, uh, do not criticize or don't go for the negative 
See, whenever we talk about any negative uh, about the perspective of Pakistan cricket, it's just for the betterment, not for the uh, criticism, for the sake of criticism. Why people were talking about Azhar Ali, that Azhar Ali is the most senior player, and why didn't he take the responsibility? Uh, whenever we talk about that the, the players like Azhar Ali or Shweb Malik in white ball cricket, they got the responsibility. And you know that right now, even people are talking about that, why we are not playing with two wicket keepers and why Sarfraz is not in the team. So it's another de debate. I'm not going into the details. The only good thing uh, which I wanted to discuss, that is the temperament of Abdullah Shafi Shafiq. It's been phenomenal, you know. A player who is scoring 100, more than 150 runs just uh, with the 90 singles, Ahmed, it's, it's amazing. I, l I love to watch that innings uh, again and again because, mm -hmm. you know, as uh, during the before the program, you were telling me that uh, he plays so closely with his uh, body, which mm -hmm. is the key point whenever you are playing uh, in Sri Lanka against the spinners. If you're going with the front foot, you will see that uh, uh, what happened with the Azhar Ali. It was a flighted delivery and he got out in the slip. So, uh, Abdullah Shafiq realized and uh, before this series, everyone was talking about that Shah Masood is not in the, uh, Shah Masood in the side, either he's playing or not. Uh, a debate started after the game uh, when they announced the squad and people were asking why Fawad Alam is not in the squad. So, mm -hmm. you got the answer. Why Fawad Alam? I think those questions, Asif, are still very valid. Not yes. saying Fawad Alam is very valid. See, not having Shan Masood in the side up till now is very... These are valid questions. And you know, uh, so, uh, this is the criticism. Mm -hmm. If uh, you're asking me or the Hassan Bhai said that the people are talking about negative. It's mm -hmm. not negative. Hassan Bhai didn't say people are talking negative. He said, K. Asif is talking negative. <laughs> That's what he should have said. Hassan Bhai. <laughs> <laughs> he should have said that. K. Asif see, is on fire right what? now. No, no. See, Fawad Alam... Uh, with the average of 94 against spinners, mm -hmm. if he's not in the side uh, in, in Sri Lanka, then definitely you'll ask the question, why is not in the side? So, and as why, really, why is he not in the side? This is your answer. <laughs> this <laughs> is your answer. Your turn now. Give me an answer now. So, uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, overall, it was a very good test match. True. Yeah. In the first innings, batter was not with, came up with the planning. Mm -hmm. The execution was not good. They didn't uh, put their best. Now they're playing well. Babar Azam was phenomenal as he ever, you know, uh, he is the backbone for Pakistan cricket team. That's his skipper as well. Rizwan played nicely and uh, hats off to Naseem Shah. He played 60 Absolutely. balls. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that, that, that should have had another award for him. That was another resilience. Yes. But, but uh, Sire, if I may, uh, uh, what is uh, this special thing about Multan? I just got to know today that the first time Abdullah Shafiq was seen on to, uh, you know, on, on the big stage was when he was playing that exhibition match for, uh, in that Multan Sultan's game. In this heat. So, you know, if you manage to survive in this heat, then you end up becoming special um, anyway because you don't have a choice. Uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, going with, with Asif Bhai's point, he's absolutely right. There's a difference between criticism, which is very important and criticism which is very valid and a difference between unnecessarily being, being being negative and there are questions like you rightly said these questions need to be asked but for now I think we should just bask in the fact that we've gone and, and gotten a record chase we already hold the record for the highest chase against Sri Lanka that was in you know uh, Palakele so to do it here in Gaul where we saw Australia get uh, chewed up and spat out just a few days ago uh, when they played their last game here uh, against the same same lineup, I think it's something we can be really proud of. Well, we should be because I think the fact is that these boys in in these five days have shown a lot of metal, a lot of resilience. It's not easy chasing a target down on this track, and we highlighted this a couple of days back, courtesy of stats given by Mazhar Ashad Bhai, that uh, the the average run scored or the run rate over there is abs is the second lowest in the world after Chennai. In, in this final innings or on the final two days, it's it was not at all easy. Uh, Sri Lanka, of course, I think their bowlers did a pretty well job, very disciplined. Uh, they'll go back to the drawing table and they'll come back strong. That's what they did against Australia in the second test match. They took Australia by storm and Australia had no clue what had happened to them. That's how they lost the test match. That being said, of course, Abdullah Shafiq, uh, Babar Azam, all of these notable performers would be there, but we need to come back strong. We don't want to get this series away. But that's the fact, Asif. Uh, you know, somebody wrote on Twitter and I felt really emotional there. He said, had we made some quality wickets against Australia, maybe we would have been in a more better position on the ICC Test Championship table. That's right. I mean, very valid question. 
but I think that we got the answer from uh, Chairman Pakistan Cricket Board, mm. Ramiz Raja. We were on defensive position. And I don't know when Ramiz Raja was sitting in the comm box. He was so aggressive. Uh, he always uh, come up on the front foot. But whenever <laughs> he came up on the position where he could take the decisions, he went on the uh, back foot defensive position. But was time taking process. Time? No, I'm not saying that when overnight you could change all the things. Mm -hmm. You'd have to go with the, at least you'd have to go with the aggressive approach, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what Babar Azam is showing actually in his batting. Um, uh, uh, you know, before the program, I was telling you that I was not happy with Abdullah Shafiq when 16 runs remaining and he went and he, he got for a big shot. Mm -hmm. Thanks God, the catch was dropped and courtesy that was the... Sri Lankan fielder, it was a lollipop catch actually, mm. it was a dolly actually. See, these are the things which you have to understand and uh, the youngster especially, a player who is coming up uh, and scoring more than 150 runs, uh, see his temperament, see his uh, body language, his confidence and, uh, um, and, and the, all of the things were really perfect and that's why when he scores uh, 90 runs with the singles, mm -hmm. what he taught actually to rest of the batters that there is no need to go, you know what we have uh, had discussed in the yesterday's program that uh, what would be the key for tomorrow mm -hmm. and I said that only you, you play just with the, uh, with the merit, don't go against the spin, there is no need for the experiment, one experiment done by the captain Babar Azam. credit to Rizwan for that as well, you, yes, because that, he, he made sure that Abdullah did not have all the pressure and those 40 runs were taken out of the equation. That's right. You know, it's a team effort actually. In the first innings, Babar Azam and Shaheen was phenomenal. In the second innings, uh, Babar Azam and uh, Abdullah Shafiq, mm. Imamul Haki won. He, uh, you know, uh, 35 runs scoring in the uh, in, in, in first innings, yeah. sorry, in second innings, mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, early on and giving you, rate, yes. yeah, giving you a solid uh, start. And after that, the rest of the batters, they did a really uh, good job. One thing, I don't know why they sent Hassan Ali earlier, mm -hmm. why they were in hurry, what was the wrong? Everything was going I think perfectly. I, I agree. I think I also had that hunch in mind, but I think they were just worried that the rain might come in again. So they probably wanted to finish the game because trust me, I have never seen this amount of rain uh, causing a wet outfield. I became skeptical of the covers that were put on. I was so put off that why did this have to happen right now? So Pakistan was not just a slight, a slight change in our mood as well. Yes. Today, we were not praying for the rain, uh, you know, <laughs> what's our track record, we always pray for the rain. But Pakistan <laughs> did not just beat Sri Lanka, they beat that rain as well. Yeah. So thankfully, conditions improved and in that time frame, we were able to chase it down. Uh, Hassan, if we look at Abdullah Shafiq technically, uh, you know, just try to analyse him as much as we can. Played very late uh, and I keep on saying that this is a guy who scored 13 in the first innings. He had the weight of his shoulders, he had to score personal milestones were not into consideration because he wanted the team to win and then of course also keeping a wicket on the other end uh, surviving is another job overnight and then this day as well the technique that he's played with with that uh, late movement trying to playing as play as late as he can you know with the small feet not getting a big stride out just showed a lot of character and a lot of skill for someone so young MLG like Asif I said he played close to the body, he, you know, he, he wasn't, I know it's going to be easy to say he was defensive. He was solid. He was always, always in control other than that one shot that he played when, you know, he probably thought the game's already won. And look, I don't want to put unnecessary pressure on the boy, but you know, you're looking at his start to his test career. The only people he's trailing at the moment in terms of runs are Sunil Gavaskar, Don Bradman and, and, and Don Headley. You know, that's a lot of pressure, but it just goes to show that after so long, we found someone like this and then the fact that in his first few tests he's gone and outscored the great Javed Miyadad it puts pressure but it also shows that this is a once in a lifetime player and that's why it's very important that you know this innings is the making of him today but when the bad patches come when the bad time comes I hope we remember this and just keep giving him that opportunity to be himself and I think a lot of credit goes to the management to the captain for they clearly believed in him they backed him and you very rightly pointed out about Rizwan coming in taking that pressure off him Asibai very rightly spoke about Imam also who had a very unlucky uh, freak dismissal so to say and then even you know there's other arcs within this game Mohammad Nawaz taking five wickets scoring a very you know important 19 runs there Yasser Shah coming back it's, it's amazing that we've had five days of cricket and very few people are talking about that delivery from Yasser Shah that I think at any other time would be spoken about for, for years, if not, you know, days and months. 
So overall, just something really positive for Pakistan and Abdullah is a very big part of it. Long may it continue for him and I hope that we appreciate what a special talent we have here, what a brilliant young player we have and when, when he's flying high, great, wonderful. But when he's not doing as well, I hope we remember this about him and give him the same kind of backing for his confidence. Well, you mentioned what? a very important point. Asif, I'll, I'll just yeah. come to you. Uh, I, I just want to explore this further because it's interesting, Hassan, that I was talking to Sarah Meer on another platform. She also highlighted a similar thing that, look, this is a guy you're all praising right now. Pakistani uh, fans are over the moon on social media. They're calling him King Abdullah right now, doing everything that they can for him, making emojis and memes and everything. But the fact is that you need to remember, like you said, that the bad patch will come. It comes with the best in the world right now currently with Virat Kohli. The fact is that then you don't need to criticize because we've got a very short memory when it comes to remembering what players have done for us. We, we do, Amaji, and also look, I mean, over the years, you, you will remember this, you're, you're younger than I am, but you'll remember this, but so many players came in, had a good start, everyone was like, that's it, we've cracked the code. Opening for Pakistan is tough work. If we go back into our history and we look at our best openers and how they've performed, so many other openers have been given a chance. How many openers have we got who've got 100 on debut, then gone, scored 50, had two bad games, been dropped. There are guys who've been dropped playing for Pakistan when they've got an average of like 43, 44. Doesn't make sense, but it was like, oh, well, we went on a tour to England. He didn't play so well. We never played him again. I mean, Zahid Fazal is someone uh, people will remember who started his career so well in Test and ODI cricket, the only two formats at the time. He was dropped before he was 21, never played for Pakistan again. So I just hope we handle Abdullah. In, in the great times, everyone is your friend, Emergy. Everybody loves you and everyone is making the memes. The memes turn dark very quickly. He's a young guy. It's important that we keep... Uh, you know, uh, giving him confidence. It's amazing that we still feel the need to give Babar Azam confidence after the innings he played in the first innings, which is one of the best innings you'll ever see in terms of getting Pakistan even close enough to win this game. And people are talking about his intent. They're saying, oh, he was defensive. Why is he taking singles? So as, as, as a fan base, it's so much more than just a nation now because so many people mm. support Pakistan around the world. As a fan base, we need to really enjoy this time. But also remember, when the bad time comes, I hope we give Abdullah the same amount of love that we're giving him right now because it will only help make him a better player. And there's no doubt that he's a special, special player. Yes, sir. Well, yes, um, uh, this is what I w wanted to say. Mm -hmm. um, Hassan and Ahmed, both of you, I want your uh, opinion concerning this. It's really important, you know, that uh, the Babar Azam century, if you see his wagon wheel, why I want mm -hmm. to discuss this, because uh, if uh, youngsters are uh, listening and watching to us, it's really important. The Babar Azam have scored most of the runs in extra cover area yeah. and the mid wicket area. He didn't go, the, uh, didn't go for the late cut mm -hmm. and um, the sweep shot, or you get stair shot. Mm -hmm. And this is really important in test cricket that you are playing. Uh, with the merit and not going for the flat shot or uh, late cut shot. So uh, when Babar Azam tries to play, you know, extra cover area and then with the in the, in the V area and then mid wicket area, see his wagon wheel will be really happy that uh, the 80% of runs mm -hmm. in this area have so come from a straight bat. Basically. With the straight bat. But so as if how important is that balance then? Because right now I think the biggest mistake that youngsters make because, you know, and not just youngsters, I think Virat Kohli has a very big problem playing that cover drive or the mid-wicket shot. How important is to keep your, you know, lower body in a very stationary position then? The, the balance of your self when you're playing these shots. Really important, you know, if you see Rahul Dravid, why mm. I'm talking about a steel wall, a perfect batter, or if you talk about the Damien Martin, mm. according to the books, they are the players who are perfect with the techniques or uh, the great Jack Callis. Uh, I do remember that and I have mentioned earlier as well that uh, there is no need to go for the powerful shots or powerful, you know, this is what uh, Virat Kohli and Azhar Ali did in, mm. in this test match as well, that he went for the full shots. There is no need to go for that. Just, uh, uh, you know, that you are uh, head and shoulder. It's in the position that you could see anywhere. It's really important. And uh, when you are going with the, with the line of the ball, and let's suppose if uh, we talk about that what is fourth stump is, mm. if you are going to chase the fourth stump's delivery, would be really uh, would be really difficult for you, dangerous for you. It's just a small That's, decision you've got to Yeah. Take. Either you're going for the full shot mm. or you're just showing the middle of the bat and just saying that I'm getting the boundary. So this is the difference between uh, uh, the, the mature batter, upgrade batter 
and I don't know that why Virat Kohli is struggling there because he's a great batsman. Mm. Very true. I think the yeah. te technicalities need to be discussed because nowadays it's all about power hitting. But one thing is uh, clearly adamant, uh, Hassan, that uh, be it Babar, uh, be it uh, Abdullah Shafiq, some of these guys who time the ball really well and throughout the world. Then, of course, we've got Joe Root, Williamson, Kohli himself to an extent. That timing of the ball and your balance is key right now on especially these kinds of tracks. Absolutely, Amaji. And also, it's it's about the mindset, you know. They, they didn't allow themselves to get bogged down. They didn't take the pressure on. We we know, those of us who've grown up watching Pakistan cricket, how mm -hmm. dangerous left-arm spin is. We heard about, you know, when Prabhat Chasuriya took all those wickets on debut and we realized his next game is against us and he took nine wickets. Most of us probably started having panic attacks because, let's be honest, I think 30% or 40% of Rangana Herat's test wickets are against Pakistan. We just struggle <laughs> against left-arm spin and people started saying, oh, well, Babar can't play left-arm spin. I, I thought he played left-arm spin all right, didn't he? So the thing is that it's just about overcoming your weaknesses and overcoming those things. You both rightly pointed out about the need for having technique playing close to the body, being very still. Uh, we saw that. And again, it's it's something that is very important to have in, in the most important and the most difficult format of them all in test cricket. And you know, Gaul is a wicket that a lot of people say three, four days, everything goes fine. Last day, it just starts spinning and, and turning. So this is psychologically very well, big. I thought the wick wicket got a lot better these last two days. It was a complete <laughs> shift in what had been happening. Uh, after all, you know, we, we, we go to the mosque five times a day, don't we? <laughs> so that's why it happened. Uh, of course, we can, we can, the Pakistani nation can take credit for, for the wicket getting better because it didn't get better for Australia. I don't think they thought that they'd be all out for the 100 odd that they, uh, they made last time around and lose by an innings. So it did get better, but there were patches of it, especially when the ball was new, that the wicket was taking some turn. But it was also the accuracy. I thought what set Jaya Surya apart was he was very accurate. He hardly gave you anything. And Abdullah didn't seem phased by it. Uh, Babar didn't seem phased by it. And then we just kept plugging away like uh, Asibai said, kept taking the singles, treating the ball on merit. These are the things Pakistan can take away from this game. And hopefully, inshallah, we do it again the next match. Irrespective of the result, I think we'll be in a better position. Well, Asif, that's the point. No matter what the result is, we've always advocated the fact that we want to see a positive, <coughs> positive approach. Hassan Bhai highlights this uh, in a very, I think, uh, particular manner that we see now that Babar Azam and what he is now giving to the team is that positive mindset of uh, not playing uh, cricket in fear, expressing yourself, even if there's a target of, uh, you know, of certain runs that cannot be achieved according to the record books or the condition, you go after it. Even like you say that even if you lose, yeah. at least show some courage. Yeah, this is what happened with the England team, you know, mm. that and according to your sources, which are really strong actually, <laughs> that uh, we came to know that uh, their uh, head coach t told them only one thing that I don't know either you're winning or losing, doesn't matter. Just go with the positive cricket stay, you know. And that's why Johnny Besto was so brave, so courageous and they got the victory. Mm. This is uh, actually as Hassan said that the mindset, your mindset uh, brings up, uh, you know, positivity actually. Mm. If you are coming up with the positive mind, of course that you'll be in, uh, you'll be in good position, of course. So uh, if your coach is telling you, uh, it's it's really difficult match. Things are getting really you know weird for Pakistan. This is the fifth day, fourth day. Uh, there's a huge turn in the pitch, and there will be getting difficulties. So of course that you'll be in down position. Mm. So if you want, to, this is all about your coaching staff is. So I think that uh, I don't know what your sources are telling, but Saklan Mustaq uh, uh, has told them the head coach that. Uh, go and play your positive cricket. Just concentrate that that you're not playing any sort of unnecessary shot. And uh, rest of the things are in higher hand. Uh, yesterday it was 50-50. In mm -hmm. the first session it was 75-25, and it's coming then 100% Pakistan's hand. Cause Abdullah Shafiq played a tremendous innings, and I'm so happy. You must be a great stockbroker. You've got your <laughs> ratio spot on. But my sources have told me KTPL is being postponed. But <laughs> that is another, <laughs> another brand of cricket. That being said, uh, Hassan Bhai, finally going into the next test match. Uh, I think not just when you lose. Even if you win, you want to make some adjustments. Uh, people have been a bit sceptical about uh, even Shine Shah Afridi with his niggle in, uh, in the knee as well. It was a bit of a uh, you know scare for us. But uh, do you believe any changes probably might be made going into the next test match? 
It's possible, uh, Amaji. I think uh, there might be, uh, you know, um, a feeling that they might go for a pitch that spins even more. So in that case, just going in with three paces, especially if Shaheen does have a niggle, does that make sense? Uh, the the right thing to do would be probably to bring in if we do leave uh, one of our bowlers out, maybe bring in someone else who can bat, maybe Saud. Uh, Fawad also is 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 up there. Uh, but if Shaheen is okay, you want to play him. You want to give him because he is your best bowler at all times. But I don't think we'd want to risk his health. Uh, mm. Otherwise, the same eleven is okay. Uh, I think it'd be very harsh on Salman to drop him after just one game, especially when he came in in a pressure situation and you know unfurled the reverse sweep. He showed a lot of guts. It didn't uh, finish for him the way he would have wanted to. But we have a good backup in Saud. We have uh, a very good player like uh, Asif Bhai said in Fawad, who can bat, bowl and field very well and has that record against Sri Lanka. So maybe maybe that change can be, but I think it will depend on the on the wicket. Uh, they, they probably the, the hosts might go for something with a bit more spin uh, because that's where their strength lies at the moment. So maybe if we are to rest uh, Shaheen, I'd, I'd like to see us bring a batsman in, not another bowler. Uh, can I make a, can I make a point if you allow me? No, <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. Hasan, <laughs> um, what I'm saying is that I'm not with this approach that you're going with the five specialist bowler uh -huh. and then you require a sixth bowler as well. Uh -huh. We got five specialist bowler, then there is no need with the sixth bowler. So you just go with the proper batter and that is the forward. So you don't want to see Babar Azam bowling off spin. <laughs> That's what you're saying. I'm getting the point, Asif. You're very cheeky today. But Hasan Bhai, thank you very much. Sair, I'm sure it's going to be a royal feast tonight. Uh, nothing less than that because the team has won and it's going to be a great one. But thank you very much for joining us. Uh, obviously, moving on, women's cricket is also on the table today and we're going to be discussing that. Pakistan women's cricket team have managed to beat the Irish uh, women's cricket team uh, in an all-important game. Of course, it's a tri-series between them, uh, the Irish women's cricket team and the Australian women's cricket team. Just before the Commonwealth Games becomes very, very important. We do know that uh, and of course, a victory is a victory, Asif. Yes, that's right. And giving you a booster looks like a booster because uh, when you're getting confidence and before the uh, series, uh, the women team, they were hanging around in Islamabad having some <laughs> fun. That was so good. Mm. Uh, having, re you know, a dinner at Munal restaurant and uh, that that was really important for the Pakistan cricket, especially for the women, you know, mm. when you are traveling and going for uh, international tour and you're definitely. Right, Asif is right. I think uh, these activities and training should all go side by side. To talk more on this, we've been joined on Sports Extra by former captain of the Pakistan cricket team, commentator, cricket expert, and broadcaster and presenter, Sana Meer. Assalamu alaikum, Sana. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmad. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, Sana. What would you like to add? Of course, uh, it's an important victory. It comes at an important time. Obviously, the match was reduced to uh, 13 overs a side. Rain has been playing havoc, but how did you see the game all over? Um, again, we saw uh, some positives, of course, uh, positives again, uh, again from senior campaigner Nidha Dar. I think her innings were very crucial, 26 runs of 15 deliveries at the end. But overall, the batting is still a concern. Uh, it was a concern against Australia. It was a concern against Ireland also. And this time, the bowling also, I think the Irish openers played really well. Um, they were very aggressive up up top with the new ball so they put some pressure on Anam uh, who has been very consistent in T20 format and it's good that she got that kind of a practice before the Commonwealth because players like that uh, they generally don't um, get to play oppositions who dominate so it's good for Anam also it's Right Sana can you hear me? Oh, having some technical difficulties, we'll try to get Sana back online. Mm. But as she mentioned, it's an important victory, of course. Uh, confidence goes a long way, but there are still certain areas where we want to see improvements. And uh, probably, as if one of those areas right now throughout uh, world cricket is the amount of power hitting that is being focused, especially on women's cricket. I understand we're too far off than Australia, England and other teams, but even in our region, teams are playing a new brand of cricket. Well, Ahmed, you know that uh, I'm not with this idea that when we talk about the power hittings, see, if you are required eight runs in an over and you're just looking for four or five singles, then you're going one boundary. There is no need for the power hitting. The only thing is that your mindset, this is really important, Ahmed. See, please try to follow Michael Bivan, the best finisher so far in the world. Uh, uh, talk about Javed Miyadad, the legend Javed Miyadad, mm. you know, that the way they finished the game, the only they concentrated 
to play with the merit and just go with the singles and putting pressure on the opposition. So I think uh, uh, if you talk about the positivity of the Pakistan women team, uh, the Nidadar, senior player, uh, the way she's performing, all-round performance with the bat, with the ball, she's phenomenal. And Tuba Hassan, the way she was started in Pakistan against Sri Lanka, she's carrying that form with herself and bowling so nicely. And then, you know, Fatma Sana. So these are the positive signs for the Pakistan women cricket. But there so, are certain issues, Asif. Yes, I, I, I understand. This, I, I was talking to Sana and, you know, she highlighted this, uh, that at least the player should be given a surety of what number they're going to bat on. What has been happening recently in the Pakistan women's cricket team, the order has been sh shuffling too much. If a player is comfortable performing on number four, they'll change her for no reason. Yes, that's really important that if, if a player is, uh, you know, happy on to play on number three, then fine, she, she must go number three. If someone is happy to come up with the opening, so fine. I mean, this is really important point. And of course, the Pakistan management, the team, the, the head coach and the rest of the staff, they will be looking into that matter. Because uh, see, if I'm happy to play on number three, and if you're shuffling me mm. on number five, six, mm. Uh, mentally, I'm not be happy. So, yeah. if you're not happy and mentally you're not strong, you won't be able to perform. The strategy well. then obviously yeah. will come with that number. Yeah, you'll believe that okay, this is my position. That what we call about role defining yes. in cricket. And that's why you know, whenever we talk about the the greatest batters like uh, Ricky Ponting, mm. you never see him playing number four, number five. Never. Always that's number very three, very number true. three. That's it. So, so it it, it does matter. A no lot. matter what the position of yes. the match was, Ricky yeah. was always coming. Number on. three. Yeah. So yeah. it does matter a lot. So I think that our team management must be working. Working on that because mm. uh, right before the Commonwealth Games, when you're getting victory, it's really good. You know, spreading smiles in dugout. In uh, we're gonna yeah. fa be facing India. <laughs> yeah. It's an all important <laughs> game in England again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All the games are really important. Mm. You know that in, in Tri Nation series, you're playing against Australia, Ireland. All of the teams they're really strong. Australia is, you know, they they the world champions are. So, uh, but Pakistan team is getting better, mm. and as you said, that some of the areas need to be addressed, and uh, uh, I'm quite sure that the management might be working on that. Definitely, they will be. But all the best to the girls in green. Congratulations to them. They're facing uh, Australia now on the 23rd. Another important game, of course, of this tri series. But no matter what the result is, just uh, taking this as a preparation for the Commonwealth Games. Very important to get acquainted and used to the conditions, and hopefully, when they go to uh, Birmingham, they'll be performing exceptionally well. Uh, it's pretty humid right now in the UK, but obviously we're going to adjust to the conditions well. We do, and we hope that the girls in green are able to do uh, the best that they can. Asif, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been great having you on the show. Now, of course, uh, before we go, we've got to tell you something else, that the Asian Games are all set to happen. China is going to be hosting these Asian Games in 2023. The mega event was, of course, postponed due to COVID-19 concerns. The Games will now commence on the 23rd of September and of course when China is doing it it's going to be grand because we've seen that in the past as well now of course COVID has hampered certain plans but hopefully we're back to that normal and we will see these games uh, progressing according to their schedule and of course we want uh, uh, you know when we talk about the region of Asia so much talent there so much uh, competitive sports in action as well so hopefully these Asian games kick off in style and all the infrastructure some of which you're seeing on your screens right now, is going to be absolutely fantastic and phenomenal to see. And hopefully, Pakistan's contingent is able to do well in these Asian games as well. So like we just told you, the mega event, of course, starts on the 23rd of September, and it's going to be an extravaganza. That's all that we have for this edition of uh, Sports Extra from me and the entire team. It's goodbye.